Today I'm going to talk about what a SNP microarray is and how it works with a simple example. A SNP microarray is a method for checking the existence of hundreds of thousands of SNPs in one or more samples. SNP microarrays usually go for $100 to $200 and are about 99% accurate. The SNP microarray is a 10 centimeter slide with hundreds of thousands of tiny wells. Each well has a bead in it. Stuck on the surface of the bead are many copies of the same oligonucleotide probe DNA sequence. This sequence stops right before a base of interest, which is the location of a particular SNP. In this picture, I'm just drawing one oligonucleotide probe for simplicity. The sample DNA is broken into small pieces and washed over the microarray. When the sample DNA complements the oligonucleotide probe, it binds to it. Then, when the microarray is washed with the four labeled bases, A, T, G, and C, the base that complements the sample DNA is added. A laser then excites the labeled nucleotide, emitting a signal of a particular color. That color identifies the base that was added, which is the sample's allele at that SNP. Let's look at an example. For the SNP in this example, the possible alleles are A and G. Therefore, based on what alleles the sample has, there are three possible outcomes. The first possible outcome is that the sample DNA is homozygous for A at this SNP. In that case, when the labeled nucleotides are washed over the microarray, adenine is added. The laser excites the label on the adenine and a yellow signal is produced. Remember, even though I'm only showing one oligonucleotide probe here, there are actually hundreds of this exact probe on this bead. So you can imagine hundreds of instances of this reaction occurring simultaneously, producing a strong yellow signal. The second possibility is that the sample is homozygous for G. In that case, once the sample's complement DNA leading up to the SNP location is bound, a G is added. After being excited by the laser, a blue signal is produced, which again is amplified by the same reaction happening hundreds of times across the surface of this bead. The third possibility is that the sample is heterozygous and has a genotype of AG. In this case, some of the hundreds of oligonucleotide probes would have adenine added and others would have guanine added. This would happen, of course, because the sample DNA has roughly equal amounts of DNA fragments complementing each. In this case, roughly equal amounts of T and C at this location in the sample genome. Therefore, when the laser excites the nucleotide labels, half of the signal will be yellow and half of the signal will be blue, resulting in a green signal, indicating the heterozygous genotype AG. And this process is happening simultaneously on each of the hundred of thousands of beads on the SNP microarray. In the end, the allele at each locus is known with some level of confidence based on the color each bead is producing. That level of confidence varies depending on the strength and clarity of the light signal. When it comes down to it, a SNP microarray is a little bit like DNA phishing. It's great for summarizing an individual or sample in the space of known variants. But in terms of novel or rare variants, that's not what a microarray is for. If you still have questions about SNP microarrays, comment below and I will actually respond. Overall, I hope this was helpful, and if so, please like and subscribe. Thanks.